was not late. I was not late. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Sheets along with Michael Brave, Jayhawk Jensen. We're going to be going over week four in Survivor Pool stuff, and uh, we're going to be going on to week five as well. And we're going to be fading um, the lawnmower, which is going on in my backyard, which is unfortunate, but that is kind of is what it is. Um, okay, so uh, we've got a couple, lot of things to discuss as far as last week. Why don't you get started and tell me how your last week went, <laughs> and then I'll get into my very exciting last week as well. Okay, so in my standard single picks that extends into the playoffs, there were 50-ish people going into last week. I had two entries remaining. A lot of people have multiple entries. I didn't really necessarily weigh that into my consideration. I assume there'd be, you know, a lot on uh, the Jets and uh, Houston who had them available. And, and I had both of them available. I decided to split and take one and one. I, I don't really think I could have done too much more. Um, there's a slight consideration to Dallas, but um that was a Thursday game and I just didn't have a lot of time to think about it. And once I decided not to do that, I kind of just, you know, went with it without really thinking much more about it, but I would have had to have dropped down to like Arizona who lost or Chicago. I don't even think I had Chicago available, so that wouldn't have mattered. I remember I that. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think, you know, I, I like when it goes this way for, for me, because when my, it's very weird that in week five that my my picks were kind of made for me, but it's nice when there's not as much choice. And I know that I just have to pick who I have, you know, that's just sitting right there. So I went, I went one and one. I, I was surprised. I, I really was slightly considering taking Dallas. And I, but I, I only had like an hour and a half to think about it when I finally decided on it. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm going to pass. They were very highly picked. Um, there were, they were 23% picked in that pool. So I was, I was very happy that I did not pick them after seeing that. And again, I, I really didn't want to do that, but um, I, I, in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't because based on pick percentage, uh, they were more picked than even the, the Jets were. Um, so I, I lost one entry. There's 44 left now. Uh, 10 Ooh. others went down on okay. the Jets. And then in the other pool, I, I, I went for it in the other pool as well. Just, you know, pick the wrong team. Um, I had six entries left. Uh, we have doubles in 6, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18. Which you'll and never get, which you'll never get to. <laughs> we'll never get, we'll never get to 18, but I think it ch last year, I think they chopped after okay. six, after 16. So I, I'm playing for week 16 with like, small consideration to saving for 17 that, that's just what i'm playing personally playing for as of right now i went uh i went three arizona and three who won uh, i'm sorry chicago so i took three chicago wow, I, took, nice. I took and i took three um arizona i i liked the arizona pick because it didn't feel good um, I, I, met, I definitely mentioned this a couple of years ago in that, in that one big week where it is, if, it is a, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably, you know, a reasonable play. Um, and they lost. That's fine. I, I just did not want to take Houston or the Jets. I, I felt there's going to be too much potential um, equity down the line in some of those later weeks, um, specifically like, 12 and 16 and then week 15 if I had if I had both those teams available it really could have set up pretty nicely for me to have both of them um but I, I got one of them to win so that's that's fine I mean you, you know when I when you take chances like this you're not going to get you know all of your teams whether it's two or three of them to win every single week so um not 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 too bad well, lost equity but uh, I'm happy with you know, the picks overall. So some excitement, uh, you know, some good, well, good stuff, bad stuff, whatever happened to me. So as we, as we talked about last week, you know, most of my picks were made for me. I liked Houston and the jets quite a bit and some of the pools I had taken Houston. So those went to the jets. Some of them I had taken the jets. So those went to Houston and the other pick I really, really liked a lot was Arizona. So I played a bunch of Arizona and I played the rest, uh, some combination of jets and Houston. And then in one of my single pick pools, I also just, 
just uh, just just played two bits one one entry in uh San Francisco and actually one in Kansas City just to just to diversify a little bit over there. So the Arizona went down obviously and the Jets went down. But some 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 cool results just kind of, I almost have an accident because of where I got forced into just to kind of re, re remind everybody of the various the various things that that I'm doing here. I guess we'll start with the most exciting is I'm in this circa millions uh mini pool where they start, you know, where it's the same rules as Circa, except it's only a hundred dollar entry fee. And they had like 340 people in, so it's 34,000 for for first. And in that one, I was between well, I wasn't between Houston and the Jets. I had to take Houston because I had taken the Jets and and they won and Houston and Houston lost. Uh vice, excuse me, and, the Jets, and, the, yeah. and the Jets lost. And and that one, um uh, so I'm still live in that one. And that one, we are down to 12 people, 13 people. Okay. Um, wow, it's a very small percentage. Yeah. There are only 13 people left and, and I'm, you know, and already it's kind of fun. We could, I can already like get a really good, I have like a spreadsheet of like who everybody has, who they used and who I could project that they use this week and stuff like that. So, so this is a, this, the funny thing is, is it's a circa it's the circa rules meaning you have to worry about about Thanksgiving and Christmas but with 13 people left you really don't yeah no <laughs> um well what's fortunate also is that you probably want Dallas anyway for uh, for Thanksgiving you know what i mean like uh so uh anyway um so that's one thing so then let's go to some other so in the DraftKings like big chop fest i was able to get two of them through and i now have two entries left there and that one has uh 623 out of give me give me a quick pause pause for one second please yeah sorry one second uh okay so in this DraftKings thing they're down to 623 out of 18,515 uh i got two left there it's gonna chop eventually um but hey better to be in than, than not be in. And they, uh, Karen, according to them, my equity is $5,349, wow. you know, which is, which is neat. And, and here I really haven't been paying too much attention. I've been basically just clicking, you know, IEV buttons pretty much. And so in these, uh, I have, uh, who did I take? Like one of them, I took uh, Houston last week. Um, uh, so that got through and that one, look at the, look at, the, it's like a weird, like set, like this one's got Chicago chargers, bills and Houston burned. Uh, and then in this other one, I have, I used actually the Niners last week and that one's got bills, Seahawks, jets and San Francisco. I'm just kind of just like, you know, doing whatever. We'll see what happens. Now, th now I assume that singles all throughout. No singles sessions. all throughout. Yeah. Now er Eric makes a point, which I agree with. It's going to chop, but yeah. when, now, his mentality still is with mine that he's going to play this in such a fashion that if he gets it to the end, his chop, he'll have put himself in a yeah, position absolutely. to win with a lot less people. And as an example, the reason him and I both like, you know, played Arizona this week, not because we thought they were going to win. I actually felt the opposite. Uh, but, you know, I just went with what the, what the numbers said is because we want to have San Francisco for all those various weeks. Um, you know, throughout the season. And when you fade the top pick team, as we've seen so far, the the highest or second highest pick team has lost every single week so far this season in Survivor Pool with the, with the Jets having lost this week. You get a few more of those, and this thing gets chopped down, you know, considerably. Um, you know, so it's probably not going to happen, but, you know, over the course of not just one week, you know, like the Niners probably weren't going to win last week lose last week but they could have but over the course of 14 weeks if you're able to fade the top pick team at like you know 25 30 35 percent over the course of the season from here on out three, you know three times the, those teams are going to lose and if the timing you know syncs up nicely for them or for you know for me as well where we're not on that team it knocks it's going to knock out a massive percentage of the pool um okay so then this other one this is the one with singles and then doubles it's got this one's got doubles in five, like this coming week, and then nine through the end. That's from eighty six hundred people down to three hundred and two now. <laughs> so, uh, 
So we got one entry left in that. I'll just kind of show you what that one looks like. Oh, that'll be a, that'll be a fun one for this week. Yeah, well, that that one had uh, let me see show pick history: Tampa, LAC, Buffalo, and Houston. All right, and so whatever that's got San Francisco available, it's got Seattle available, it's got guys available, which we did on purpose. So then, um, then what could be the, the the most fun? So this is like a single pick pool that if it, if there's still people left, like at the end, it'll go to doubles. But I think it's already at the point where it's not going to doubles. Um, this started with 4,533. That's down to 154. And I've got four left. Um, so that is uh that's pretty cool. And those I'm like all over the place. Like I played one, I played two Houston's, I lost with some Cardinals and a Jets. I played a San Francisco. I mentioned I played a Kansas City. And I'm just kind of just like diversifying around there. So I got a lot of different approaches, a lot of different things. But then just to kind of before we get into it, I have to I have to talk about it only because we talked about it for like 15 minutes at the end. Dude, so I cashed in the Circa Millions thing for the quarter. Um, oh, fantastic. They ended up going four and one. And I was actually live for like first, which would have been 100,000 if the Ravens didn't win. Um uh, it turns out like everybody behind me had the Ravens. So I ended up like chopping whatever for like $1,600 or something like that for like eighth place or something. But I'm an eighth out of 5,600 people <laughs> right now in, in the Circa Millions pool for the season. Uh, doing nothing other than what we talked about. Just trying to look at consensus sites, look at consensus and just basically pick the five lowest owned teams every week. Um, did you go? Did you general? Did you go against the grain of online moves for this for for this past week? I Is did that... not. Um, but uh, I I uh, I went the five lowest as far as my 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 work as far as consensus goes. Yeah, it was pretty close. I was pretty good on most of them, except you know who got really jammed were the were the Jaguars. I mean, they ended up winning, but they ended up much more popular than I thought. The one that was the least popular that had the most leverage on was the only one that I lost, and that was Carolina. Like if they if they had gotten a backdoor touchdown somehow, I would have gotten. Oh, them. that was uh, that, yeah. that's a fantastic pick. I, I I don't know. My my feel would be that would have been a yeah. great one, uh, separation wise. So um, so fortunately or unfortunately, I now really have to pay attention to this fucking thing every week. You know. Yeah. The thing is, it's 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 not a big deal because I completely have a system. You know what I mean? I'm gonna fig, try to do my best to figure out who's the lowest owned team. Just play all five of them and just and just just rock it. And even my my partner or whatever, he's not in, he's not my partner in this one, but he's like uh, he was like, dude, now that you're ahead, you got to be like much more conservative. I'm like, the dude, forget that. Yeah, so I, I love the strategy because it. I mean, if the people put, ahead of you play conservative, you can just, make it. You, just put I mean, the pe- you, just put the pedal down. You know what I mean? Like it just that's the I, way. I I think last year someone had like late in the season like a two and a half or three game lead, which is absolutely insane for yeah. a pick and pull picking five teams. I, I I'm pretty sure it's something around there where they almost had it locked up going into last week for first, and the only way you do that is by you know, either running like God yeah, or, but more likely it's, you know, you're, you know, running good on highly separated picks, you know, getting on the opposite end of, of, of the people around you. Yeah. So this is, this is the results here. So I am in a uh, T eight, actually T five. Okay. But the, you know, five, six, seven, eight are all tied. Hold these guys, people tied for fifth. And this is out of 5,700 people. And we are 15, whatever, it doesn't matter what we are, but 15, four and one. And uh, so we're a half point out of first, but whatever, we're just going to keep on doing what we're doing. And I'll tell you something. When I was looking at who I needed at the ends, like going into Sunday night's game Monday, because I had already been like all my teams done. I couldn't imagine. Look, look at all these T people that had Baltimore, like everybody. It was like yeah. such an incredible consensus. So I, I think I'm doing it the right way. And that's. Oh, and- I, I, I like it because it takes a lot of the decisions out. You're not oh, going yeah, for feel. It. You're not handicapping. Who needs it? it? It's the only time I ever did that pool was the, was the Gregorich pool. Yeah, and yeah. I was in great position and then I just tanked. Yeah. But I, I liked it because I looked at my picks every week against the people ahead of me for at least the first two weeks that I was right there. And like, wow, these are amazing. No one took these teams. Uh, and, and that's, you know, if they went the other way, I would have been in first. Um, and had a nice and a nice lead, and really, I would have just kept pounding the same way. And then once I felt the lead would have been, you know, more or less insurmountable, I would have, you know, regressed back to something more conservative. But I like this because I think it's it takes a lot of the decision making out of it. And I don't like um, I don't pick against the spread anyway. Who, 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 yeah. All right, so let's take a look at this week. Um, so this coming week, 
I, I'm going to give my my summary, and then we can we can talk about yeah. it a little bit. I really think there are only two teams you can play this week. Um, and, and, really? And, wow, and, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but but I but, mean, I I assume we're we're on the same two. But I don't I, know. Okay. I don't know. We're going to find out. So so let let's uh, and I was a little bit surprised when the when the when the when the popularity numbers came out. A um, little bit. But let's just take a look. So why don't we start? I guess as usual. Well, why don't you start? You, you do a pretty good job of 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 of, of, of giving the overall like xing out and guys we can get rid of. But we let's focus. We can focus on the top. You know, there are three teams that are biggest favorites by like a ton, and that'd be San Francisco, Seattle, and Kansas City. And then everybody else yeah. is three and a half or lower. So why don't why don't you talk about I guess those three or that group? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna. Same as last week, I'm just going to throw Kansas City and San Francisco straight out. Um, again, I'm not saying these are bad picks. It's certainly, I don't think it, I was. I, I meant to jump in earlier when Eric was showing his picks when he when he showed that he, he had one San Francisco and and one uh, Kansas hey, City. Hey. I mean, I I if I had more entries in some of my 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 pools that were single picks, I would have done that too. But well, we talked about uh, this as far as portfolio diversity. You you you, ha you have to you you just have to do that because you now you could justify not doing any of those teams because they can use so many spots, but it would be disastrous to not pick one of those teams. And then Houston and the jets both lose. Right. Uh, it, it'd just be an absolute disaster because if both of those teams had lost and then you get through with San Francisco or Kansas city, then, you know, you make up, you know, some of the EV that you lost. So I, I, I don't mind San Francisco and, and Kansas city, very high EV this week, you know, Top, top, uh, top, and and third and win percentage, but I only have a couple, you know, a couple entries left here. So I, I'm laying off these teams. They're going to be a full fade, a full save for me. Uh, but again, you're not going to. I, I if, if, if a couple entries, I just wouldn't do it because you're going to really. If, if if your pool is like ten people left, you know that's different. But if your pool expects to go into you know week 14, 15 range, you're going to want these teams. Uh, and then Seattle, you know, Seattle's just an, an outright fade. I, I actually can't even take Seattle anyway in, in one of mine. I'm, I'm, I'm done with them and Chicago, but Seattle, you, you have to fade them. This is a, a, very, I mean, a very exciting game to watch uh, when, you're, you're on the, when you're on the fade side. 35% seems very hard to believe. Um, I, I, I look, I, I, I've averaged. I was a little up. shocked when I saw that, actually. Uh, I, I am too. I, I, I have a hard time believing that will hold, but I think neighbors is out. And I think even though I, everyone's saying, Oh, you know, the, the pools are sharper right now because of all the, you know, the, the popular teams getting knocked out in the first four weeks. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess maybe, but in my pool, my pool, San Francisco is 31% picked last week. And again, I don't, I would have done that if I had more entries in each of these pools as a, as a portfolio pick, but, I'm just assuming most people, you know, weren't doing it for that reason. If they even picked them, I, I think they're, oh well, there's not a lot of people left. I mean, 31 percent of San Francisco really surprised me in, in both my pools, especially in my one with double picks, where, you know, you actually you really wouldn't take San Francisco in any of my double pick weeks. Somehow, uh, that those are their worst games the rest of the year, but they're very valuable in in the weeks around uh, before and after in the middle. Um, so. You should you know, put the pedal to metal, and you and you and you, and you have to remain aggressive if, if you don't have a lot of entries left. And so I, I like saving San Francisco, Kansas City, and, and Seattle's an outright bid. So here's a, a question: I, I didn't know the neighbors is officially out. Um, if he's if he's actually out, I I don't think this line is correct. I you know, I think the line will go to seven if he's out. That's why I was asking you. Um, uh, six seems like a line presuming he's just questionable or in. So I got to research that. Yeah. And I mentioned that last week too, that for Kansas city, you, you just really can't, I don't, maybe I didn't do the podcast, but I talked to a friend. I said, you cannot pick Kansas city because that line was not, you know, a line, not knowing if Herbert was playing or not, right. it was never going to be that line. And, it, you know, Herbert played and it closed at seven. Yeah. But you know, it was at like seven and a half, eight. If, yeah. if he did not play, it would have been at least 10. So you got to be very careful. Yeah. And, and this is, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but one thing I'm very good is I'm very, I'm very good at recognizing when these, when these teams are full of shit and yeah, no kidding. At, 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 before the season started, when they mentioned this McCaffrey thing, my, my 
first back offhand comment was he might not play the rest of the year. And yep. now he, he's, he's just not. I mean, he, he, highly unlikely. So you got to be very careful picking these teams because they might say, oh, well, you know, we're hoping that he plays, but they're just playing like, you know, they're, you know, their checker, you know, chess match would match with the other coaches and they're, 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 they're taking full advantage of whatever the rules are. We got to do player, player injured. And, and you don't want this pick to lock. And then something gets announced where it was already in the leeway period. So it, it, a little bit different here. Um, I, I mean, neighbors, obviously, I mean, the guy like what, 13 receptions last week. And, and, and I, I assume the Giants are just absolutely horrible anyway. But with without him, I mean, I watched that game last week and they just targeted him all over the place, all over the field. Um, so hopefully, I mean, I, I would prefer that he that he doesn't play and then everyone's going to pick Seattle, I guess, because you know, if, if I'm picking with it, with that type of feel. I just don't see how the Giants could win. I mean, I know they can win, but uh, I, I could see a lot of people falling into that trap. See, my my view. Okay, so my view on these first three teams is uh, uh, that we we mentioned is I I, I think that San Francisco is is a really really good play. Um, and again, I'm more of a I'm more of an EV whore than you are. You know, yeah. um, and you know, one point one six is just a lot. Uh, and and they're they're two and a half point more you know more favor than the next team so there's a there's a gap there and uh and yeah uh definitely it would be nice to have them in the future it would it would be nice okay but it's always a balancing act you know it, it, it is but it's gonna it comes down to and this is where it's fun because i just always i always heavily round up yeah where do i feel i comes down to where do i feel i'm gonna get san francisco at ev wise and i'm i'm looking at week Let's looking at week eleven. Let's just disregard Miami there and assume yeah, you know, they don't never exist. never playing again. And um, you know, Philadelphia is going to be a very highly owned team. And luckily, yeah. Washington looks great. So that spread's not seven. Uh, this is not updated. Yeah, you know, no, I know that, that's that's, that's, that's see, like a, this is, that's like this a three is point the, spread. And this is the trade off. Considering San Francisco was jammed last week and is jammed in five, they're gonna they're gonna be really really un. Unpo- I mean, there's gonna be a lot of scarcity in eleven. And uh, and they're so going to be a tremendous play in eleven if you have them. And and yeah. that's and, and again, I I I want to make this very clear. I'm probably not going to get there, but if I get there, and if Miami is still bad, and if the jet, you know, the Jets, some of these spreads aren't correct, but a lot of people will be playing Philadelphia, and you know, if but the spread's not even going to be seven anyway. You know, the Rams at. New England is one of the best games. Okay, that's 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 fantastic. That that's you know the the Jets. Not many people are going to have them. Uh, Detroit will be a pretty popular pick. I, I I'm just assuming that San Francisco is going to be much higher than 1.2 EV in Week 11. Yeah, as it is right now at, at what probably the current spreads are. Yeah. So I'm going to be dropping to like you know a, a, an EV team around like one this week. So I'm giving yeah. up like 0.2. The San Francisco is probably going to be, you know, 1.3 or 1.4 as it looks like right now. So whatever I'm giving up now, I I feel I could make it up later, but it could change. I mean, there could be a bunch of other teams that that go up, too. And the thing is, honestly, is that is that until Survivor gets figured out, which is, you know, not not yet. It's just impossible to really know whether the, the, the EV edge is better than the future value edge in any of these decisions. You just have But it to won't be it. figured out because you're it's guessing. It, yeah. Like I'm I'm yeah. betting, yeah. I am hoping that yeah the, the Niners are a 10 point favorite and the next favorite is like a four. And that's real looking at those games, it's realistic that that could be a possibility. And the Niners will be very uh low owned that week just based on low availability. And there's going to be a lot of people. Everyone's going to be on a four-point spread team potentially, and the EV in San Francisco will be, you know, you know, one point four, one point five, because they might only be like, you know, five, ten percent owned with you know them being used last week, this week, uh, in in week ten. So that I'm not predicting it, but that's that's my bet. But if I had like, let's let's say something like Eric had, and that was showing he had what six picks going into last week in that one pool yeah i would have i would have played at san francisco in, in last week and i would probably i would do that one this week as well and then i'd and i'd still have four left over i, I would be picking san francisco some uh i do agree as far as kansas city goes they're just 
they have future value and they're just not as good of an EV play. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. I'm probably off of that. And, and, and Seattle, I would, I would, I would say about one thing about Seattle is they do have very little future value. So uh, they do have that uh, yeah. going for them. And so like in this particular week, like when I have them available in, in that double pick pool and I need to play doubles, I might eat it and place mm-hmm. that on that, you know, um, yeah. just because again, those types of pools, you got to get rid of the future value teams. So I might just eat it in that one. Um, I, okay. I, I, I could see myself doing that too. In, in one where like next week we have doubles and, you know, I could, I could see if I had a lot more picks, I, 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 I could see myself taking more than zero Seattle just uh, so, just so I don't have to take so many two and three point favorites. Okay, so so let me so now these all these all these guys in the middle. All right, well hold on, I'm gonna eliminate another team. I'm gonna eliminate Baltimore right now. Just oh yeah, yeah, that's my LOL list. Okay. Yeah. So these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six teams or so in the middle. Okay. Yeah. And well, you know, you want to include Washington, you include Washington, whatever. But Washington's lower EV even than Seattle, so I'm not interested. Um, okay. I, 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 my just opinion is, and I like went through all this stuff. I, I just think that if you're not going to play San Francisco, you just have to play Denver. I, I don't think it's even particularly close. Um, no. but, but, but the, the, here, if, if you're not going to play Denver and play one of these others, it's, it's, it's also good for different reasons, you know? So Denver, all these guys are the same as far as like their, their, their EV really now they're, first of all, they're all three, three and a half point favorites. They're all EV around one. It's all the same shit. Okay. Um, and Denver looking out in the future, they got a whole lot of nothing. Okay. Like now they could end up like being better than maybe we think in 15 or something, maybe, you know, or I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's zero right now. Um, and then you look at these others, they all are just, a, in my opinion, just a little worse. Okay. So so, but, but this is where we talk about this stuff. So Chicago, you know, they look good, but staring right in the face is Chicago in 10. Okay. Uh, against New England. And we're going to get back to that in a second. Jacksonville, not the worst, but staring you right in the face is Jacksonville in seven against New England. Again, uh, you want to drop to Minnesota and Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, uh, but then even Minnesota, you look at 13, they could be a big, be pretty, remember that I don't think they've updated their power ratings yet on Minnesota. I mean, they're really good. You know, Minnesota at home is not minus two against Arizona. Okay. That doesn't exist. Okay. Um, and then Pittsburgh in eight is like really, really good, especially if you don't have Buffalo available, you know, and, and you need to do something there. Um, so I think that the, the Denver play is just better, but again, now we're going to go back to the whole thing about, Oh, and, and Green Bay, as I mentioned, in, in six as well. You know, Minnesota's but, gonna be a six point favorite against uh, yeah. Arizona. So, so, but the thing is, and you can you, you'll probably piggyback off of this is that is that all the things I mentioned, like Green Bay saving them for six, is 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 great, but everybody's gonna do it, <laughs> and yeah. everybody's gonna have them available. Same thing with Chicago. In ten, whoever's got Chicago is gonna be unloading them. Jacksonville, if they, you know, in seven, if you don't have the right teams, they're going to be loading them. So, so you could save them for those weeks, but they are going to be sort of popular in those weeks. So that's, that's, that's the, the trade-off. So I, I'm down, I'm down to the same list as well. Um, I, I, I've thrown out Washington just because, you know, I mean, assuming this, this, these percentages are going to be accurate. I, I have no reason to believe that they're not going to be. Um, you, you just, you can't pick a team that's, you know, the same winning percentage as Green Bay, but three, you know, three times picked, um, you, you, you know, and then you look at Jacksonville, you know, they're, they're, they have a slightly better chance of winning, but Jacksonville is like 10 times less picked. You, you, just, you, you can't do that. So w- w- Washington is going to have to, you're going to have to fade. Uh, same with, same with Minnesota. I mean, they're not even, they're a smaller winning percentage than Jacksonville and Denver. Um, and, and this is what, this is where you find a lot of, uh, you know, edge and survivor pools is the recency bias is extremely high. So I, I have all the teams crossed out on survivor grid, except for green Bay, Jacksonville, Denver, Minnesota. And you start, you, know, you just sort by, by win percentage and green Bay has the highest win percentage. And then Jacksonville, Denver, Minnesota, yet Minnesota is higher pick than green Bay, Jacksonville, and Denver. Uh, you know, that that's, you know, that, that, you know, that just means you just can't take Minnesota. Um, you you have you're just you're forced onto 
th those other teams. And if you, if you make your decisions this way, you're taking all the emotions out of it and you're making the decision process a lot easier. You, you're you're going to, you're going to get down to a lot less teams. You're not going to be deciding between five teams and then, you know, using a lot of abstract variables that just really don't matter. I have it down to my, my favorite, my favorite team is, is, is Denver, um, you know, just like you, but I, I also like Jacksonville. The reason Denver is the best, like Eric said, you just look out on that schedule. And I, again, I always look at the end of the season because that's where you're going to have games where if the team is in a playoff race and they're up against a team, that's not in the playoff race. One team's playing for something, the other team's giving up. You can, you can have some big spreads. Well, they're at um, – they're host – they have by hosting Indianapolis at the Chargers at Cincinnati, Kansas City. Uh, not not very attractive. So that – even be, even more reason to take them. You're not going to get that lucky, you know, seven-point, um, you know, spread at the end of the season. So De Denver's a great play. I, I really like Jacksonville too because I, I think Jacksonville is just going to be a really big fade uh, uh, in seven. But even if like I would want to take them, I'm going to take more than Denver anyway, unless I only have one pick left. So if I had one pick, I would take Denver, but I'm not going to take all of my picks on Denver. So I, I, I like Jacksonville um, as well because looking at week seven, and and definitely do this when you're between teams. If you're if you have double pick pools, look at your double pick weeks and let that be the if it's really close, let that be the tiebreaker. Is that a not is it is that a team that has a lot of good playable weeks? Is that a team that you'd want to be able to have available? Because if no one's going to pick that team anyway, up until those double pick weeks, then you you're probably going to want to fade that team anyway. But if it's a team that you would want to conceivably have available pick the other team instead and save that team just, in, you know, just in case. Cause in the, in the end, you can only pick maybe one team and you got to look for some tiebreakers and, and looking ahead on the schedule and, and, and comparing the teams is a, is a good way to do that. But Jacksonville and seven, every, I, I, I assume no one's picked them yet. No, they, what, they haven't won any games. So um, everyone's going to no, have. No one's picked them, but I mean, and and but Buffalo is still very available. Correct. Yeah. Um, but and, but and, then again, I think the Rams could be played. Yeah. No. That, that yeah, that's a good point. So you know, even though they're at the top, yeah. So Philadelphia is pre is pretty available. Uh, Baltimore shouldn't get picked. New Orleans will be available. Atlanta, so Atlanta will be available, but I don't think. No, okay. Th this is this is definitely a spot where it's not a clear fade because again, if if Jacksonville is behind a couple of these teams, just looking at you know, it's not a good sample size, but you can do this exercise every week. Look at the teams with very similar win percentages that are like the second and third tier teams, and you'll see that the teams that are picked higher amongst that that subgroup are the teams with the best record, the best quarterback or have been the hottest lately. Um, so if Jacksonville, is, if a couple teams, you know, get ahead of them, you know, for that week, Jacksonville could end up being an amazing pick. They're also on neutral field. So, you know, the group that doesn't like picking, you know, neutral field games for whatever reason, then they, they're going to lay off that one. Or the people that make their picks in the morning but don't wake up in time. Yeah, the only, I, the only problem, though, is that, that there's this also this narrative that Jacksonville is, like, undefeated in, like, Europe or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually – I, I kind of fall into that one, too. And I did <laughs> – when I did that, though, it didn't work. Um, yeah, exactly. exactly. But I, 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 I like those teams as well. I, I think Green Bay is, is definitely playable. But, you know, Green Bay just has – much more potential. I mean, they got they have Miami in thirteen, they have New Orleans in sixteen. Is, so for is, me, is, for is, me is, for, is Miami done? Is Tua done, or is he coming back? Yeah, well, in my opinion, he, he he's done. They're just I, I, I like in the end, it's going to be the team's decision if they want to bring him back or not. But if they keep losing, why are they going to bring him back? There's there's no that wouldn't serve the you know the best purpose for the team let you know let alone to himself so i don't think just like the rams last year the rams end of the year they were the they were last place in betting market they were basically limited for the playoffs and they just you know aaron donald was done and and, and cooper cup was done. i'm sorry 2 years ago was it 2 years ago 
they, they, all those guys just sat and, and they didn't play him for the last six, seven weeks. And the team was just absolutely miserable. And we've seen what that team looks like right now. If Tua doesn't come back, that's, you know, you know, there's probably going to be some, you know, you know, legitimate trade talks for Tyreek Hill because they can probably get, you know, something for him. Hopefully, you know, the Kansas city gives them something because we have a little issue with wide receivers over here right now, but I have a hard time believing that they're going to bring him back just because they're going to be completely out of it. I mean, uh, you lose two more games, the season's over. Um, but so Green Bay looks very attractive. I have them, I have doubles in, in 13 and 16. So there's no way I'm taking Green Bay because I would rather take, again, the teams that don't have that, you know, the value in those double pick weeks. But I, I do like, you know, Green Bay has very high EV, you know, pretty low pick, uh, pick percentage. But they do have some, you know, a lot of spots, uh, you know, six, 13, but really the end of the season stuff. I mean, 13 is very attractive. Um, and then, you know, potentially, you know, I hate to look way out to 18 because you never know. But, you know, they're, you know, at least they're at home, you know, they're at home against Chicago um, and then, you know, New Orleans in 16. So that's my that's my cat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I. I... I think going anywhere else is kind of dumb and, and uh, um, that's pretty much all that, all that, all that I got. Um, It's scary because uh, we're we're hinging on some, you know, uh, you know, this, you know, some 60 percenters and I hope, uh, I hope the two don't lose because otherwise uh, the the podcast is going to come to a very early end, but they feel like very strong picks. And again, when, with this line of thinking, if it doesn't feel good, to me, it's probably it's probably a very good high EV uh, pick because if I'm struggling to do it or don't like doing it, the rest of the uh, I would say most of the rest of the field is going to struggle dropping down. Oh, and, again, it's and excuse it, me that zo- that zone of play. Like I knew, like from the moment I conceived it, that it had no chance. You know what I mean? Like it was a great play, survivor yeah. wise. But we had Kingsbury going back to freaking Arizona. You know, I thought about all I thought about all this too, but I, I like yep. this feel I how do I how, like I said, how am I picking against a guy who, a team that hasn't punt punted once in like two yeah, games? I mean, it's ridiculous. But you know, but that but that was that's what yep. pushed me over the edge. Know, if it if it feels nasty, yeah, you know, just do it. Now, of course, if they ran the game back, I I, I mean I assume, you know, this Washington might be if they ran the game back right now, where's Arizona betting market? Probably be pick them. It wouldn't be. A it point. would be uh, about a two point spread at, okay. at, at, at most, at okay. most. Um, and, and that's, but you know, who's going to, who's going to do it. And, and we got to, we got to, we got to fade some good teams. They're also good. There's also a good fade against some of your own picks of our own picks. Like if uh, you know, once it happened, like, if uh, oh, I guess that game was second, but it's nice to have that third team in there. We had Houston and the Jets; they both lose, but you get through with a third team. Yeah, I know. Then, then I, you I, have I, the, the San Francisco people get through, but no one has San Francisco left. Yeah, except for you and the other couple, you know, teams right. that were picked. And and, yeah. and 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 it's not that you should be picking as a purpose, but that's why when you have a lot of picks in a pool that you, you diversify. So when those scenarios happen, like last week for example amazing things happen like the only thing that would have been better last yep. week is if the jets had lost that's the only way i could have got like more ev was if one of my teams had lost and that's a gr- obviously a great position to have been in for the week when it's so catastrophic that you 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 just wish that one more of your teams had lost because it would have knocked out an additional 60 65 percent of the remaining field that, that got through well, I will say this for those of you who want to sweat about I post my stuff like as soon you know, usually as, as the game start on Sunday. But I promise you that I'm gonna have some San Francisco. I promise you I'm gonna have some Denver. That that I promise you. There's a chance I have some Seattle then uh in the doubles, and there's a chance I have, believe it or not, uh I might flick in uh, a Kansas City uh to be an EV whore in somewhere. I don't know where, but depends on the on what the entry looks like. But that's that's probably what you're going to be rooting for, as far as I'm concerned. And as far as the circa millions, I won't know what I have until I put it, that stuff in. I promise you, whichever team you think has like just no chance to win, those are the ones that I have. That that I 
that those that's 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 gonna that's gonna like for example if I just eyeballed it without even looking at the spreads like who looked like really bad last week I don't know maybe like Cleveland or something like that. oh beautiful Cleveland at like Washington perfect you know what I mean give me give me Cleveland going into Washington is only a three point underdog that, see that's the kind of thing that I'm I'm, I'm interested wait, in can we, wait can we talk <laughs> we you have double picks in that one pool so you're yeah. are you are you gonna go Denver Jacksonville. No, no, no. In the double pick pool, on the opposite, I'm the double pick pool. I'm going to probably play Seattle because it's a more of a of a no EV, uh, excuse me, no future value thing. I think I don't think I'm going to be able to do it uh, to 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 not play Seattle, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, good luck, everybody, and uh, let's let's hope hope let's hope, hope to, to see, see you next week. week. <laughs> bye bye. Right, later.